Hello, sir. And yeah, hello, welcome. everyone. Hello, everyone. We, uh, the IIDC cell from ASSMSS Institute of Information Technology, Pune, is organizing this webinar, uh, which is financially supported by Ministry of Education, Government of India. Today's resource person, Mr. Uh, Jaivant Mahajan, sir, will uh, conduct this session on early stage entrepreneurs. Before starting the session, let me give a brief introduction for our expert. Mr. Uh, Jaivant Mahajan he is currently the director of Pi Motors Automotive Private Limited and also director of Get My Solutions Private Limited, Pune. He is uh, B Electronics from Pune University and MS in Embedded Systems. Our resource person is having more than 19 years of experience working on automotive design and development. The main domain ex experience is on electric vehicles and also on driver assistance and infotainment systems. He also worked as a consultant for Mahindra Engineering Services and Senior Design Engineer for Tata Motors Limited. He is having a huge experience dealing with the electronics vehicle as well as HEV. The vehicle design and development, you can say, is the main domain he is working with now. So, for today's session, that is for early stage entrepreneurs, we cannot get a better expert like him. So, I welcome sir for this session and uh, request to start the session. Thank you. All right. Uh, yes. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah? Sir. Okay. Right. Right. So basically, I, uh, frankly speaking, I did not get much time to make a, too many slides. So I just tried to summarize certain things. Okay. And we can, uh, again, like after then, we can follow, uh, follow it up with the question answer session where you can, if you have certain specific questions, you can ask and I will be able to help you in that particular uh, topics. Yes. Okay. So basically, just to give a brief, like uh, uh, I started my journey in 2002. Uh, I joined Tata Motors. Uh, I was working for uh, Indica Vista Nano Electric Nano Hydrogen Vehicles at that time. And 2005, I left and joined Mahindra. There, uh, it was Mahindra Engineering Services. So like uh, Tata has a TCS, uh, Mahindra had a MES, Mahindra Engineering Services. And we work for many, almost all OEMs in the world for uh, uh, two-wheelers, four-wheelers, construction equipments and trucks uh, all over the continents in US, Europe. And I could get a chance to work with uh, almost all OEMs in the world. And then uh, eventually Mahindra also bought uh, Mahindra Electric, like Reva, uh, Reva Electric, which was from Mr. Chetan Maini. And that is how my association started with electric vehicles. Before that, I worked with hydrogen vehicles, but then that is how it started with electric vehicles. We indigenized everything because that was the biggest issue uh, in 2008 time period where everything was imported from outside and assembled in India, except body, chassis, and uh, frames, and everything. But all electronics was imported, and that was a challenge which we took, and we indigenized all the designs uh, for Mahindra. Uh, then in 2015, uh, uh, Mahindra Engineering got merged with Tech Mahindra. Okay. Uh, after that, also, I'm still associated with Tech Mahindra. I do a lot of work for them and also consulting for Tech Mahindra. Uh, many companies, uh, uh, I'm in a consulting role, basically, like LNT, Tech Mahindra, uh, then Ash Bharat Forge, Ashok Leela, and Force Motors. Okay. Um, so 2015, at that time, uh, there was some recession in the market and there were a lot of things which were happening and there were no 
project pipeline as such. So there was no two, three years long pipeline. And that is how I decided, okay, let us shift to uh, the entrepreneurship uh, domain. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, we'll say, unfortunately at that time, there was nothing kind of a mentorship or startup boom what we have, we are seeing in last uh, two, three years. Okay. So there was a word of startup. People were coming up and starting. Okay. But there was no training sessions or formal courses. Now we also have formal uh, post-graduation courses, the management courses, everything for entrepreneurship and startups kind of arrangement. And colleges are also uh, arranging a lot of things uh, as per that. But that time it was not there. And that led us into a lot of uh, issues, failures, uh, problems. Okay, And um, that was a, quite a bit of learning. Two, three, I'll say uh, three years was a complete learning of uh, failing and again coming up and then stumbling on the roadblocks, legal issues, finance issues, uh, manpower issues, a lot of things keeps on coming and going, okay? And uh, then with that, uh, 2015, I started Get My Solutions Private Limited. Uh, it is currently uh, going strong with 25 engineers. Uh, and the last year we started called a company called Pi Motors Automotive Private Limited. Okay, that is mainly into the product manufacturing. So eventually in 2021, once the COVID was over, uh, we decided to start with the Pi Motors Automotive uh, as a product company because it's a different set. Uh, that is also the entrepreneur should understand like, okay, there is a service company, there is a product company. Everything cannot be in one bucket. Okay, so product has to be separate, service has to be separate. So uh, everything needs a different setup, different kind of arrangement, different type of resources. Okay, and this is how the journey is becoming. And now uh, under Pi Motors, we have two brands called Wow, Wow Cycles. That is into normal bicycle, electric bicycle, premium bicycles like titanium based bicycles uh, what we have nobody is manufactured in india today uh, these type of bicycles all are only in europe and us they are getting manufactured so we are the first one first in india to manufacture titanium bicycles which are very lightweight 6 kg uh, weight kind of thing and much cheaper than the uh, imported versions then we also came up with a product called Motobik. Motobik is a moped uh, category, but it is basically, there is a, a gap between, let's say you have an electric bicycle in the market and you have electric scooter in the market. Okay. Electric bicycle cost you around 30,000 rupees. Scooter cost you around 90,000 rupees plus. Right. But there is nothing in between uh, 35 to 90 gap. Okay, uh, when you have a, uh, if you want to buy something, either you have to buy 35,000 or you have to buy 90,000. Okay, so understanding that gap, we try to come up with a intermediate uh, vehicle, which will cost you around 45 to 50,000 rupees. Okay, and that is also one of the thing which uh, uh, anybody who is looking to start a business should understand. Okay, like finding an opportunity, like we need to find out a gap. Where is exactly the market gap? and then tapping that particular opportunity with whatever skills we have. Okay, so that is how basically it happens. So, um, one minute. Yeah, so I will skip three. I have already mentioned a lot of things. So we, other thing is like we also apply a lot of patents. Recently, we have stopped it because of certain other uh constraints uh, even the legal things because patent has pluses and minuses one plus is like your product and technology gets protected but the minus is like it gets open to the uh, market and everybody understands what you are doing and how you are doing okay so and there is quite an easy way taking that knowledge and tweaking it a little bit and filing another patent so that is why for certain things we already stopped patenting it is like kind of a, like a closed uh, box kind of a things, uh, main, mostly into the electronics and algorithm part of it. Okay, so certain things which are very visible and simple 
uh, the, we should apply patents, okay, like which where it is like a very open thing, which anybody can see it and copy it. There you should apply a patent. But when you know there is uh, the things cannot be copied, the uh, the algorithms cannot be copied, okay, or the hardware which is there inside the electronics or the chips or the circuit or the architecture cannot be easily copied if you are removing the part numbers on the chips. In that case, we should restrain from going for a patent, okay. So this is like just a, one of the things which uh, we have these are certain products which we made certain vehicles which we design okay right and these are a few of the clients whom we are working with sun mobility mahindra defense tech mahindra Barfuj, and other small and big clients basically okay. right so Coming to the basic topic which we had, like the early stage entrepreneurs, uh, which was assigned to us. So what I tried to do is like just to put some questions which everyone should ask. And uh, it was good if I would have asked those questions to myself because uh, otherwise those learning curves would not have happened. But it is always good uh, to have the learning curve because unless and until you fail, you don't learn. Because there are a lot of things which you, you can read online, you can read it in the book, somebody can tell you. Okay, but it is not every time like uh, you listen to or you read those things and you listen to those things, and but you don't uh, understand or you don't apply those things. Okay, so it is a human nature unless and until you are stuck with that uh, problem. Uh, you don't, and you solve that problem, you don't learn it. Even if somebody is telling you, boss, you should not do like this. But some things can be avoided uh, if you have those uh, uh, pointers uh, with you. And when you have those pointers, when you have answers to those questions, that is that makes your entrepreneur journey in an early stage quite uh, uh, easier. Okay. So there are certain questions uh, which you will see on the screen on next three, four slides. And these are the questions which when you are learning or when you are initial stage entrepreneur or when you are looking to start something new, okay, after you pass out from the degree or when you leave your job and start your journey, okay, in that particular case, right. So like few of the questions are there. So we'll go with one by one. Yeah, uh, something, sorry. Okay, any questions by this time? No, sir, no questions. Okay, fine, no problem. So basically when you start, first, first question you should ask is like, why you are starting this business? So there has to be certain motive behind that. It, it can be a uh, self-satisfaction, it can be your uh, uh, inner thing which is telling you to start something, or it can be certain idea which you got, which you know will stuck into the market uh, very well and it will be very huge, okay? You should not start a, start a business just for the sake of starting or just for the sake of, okay, let's see everybody starting and I should also start. That is the wrong way to go. Unless and until you definitely know why you are starting the business, you should not start. Okay. Uh, the second is like, what kind of business do you want? Right. And that is a very difficult question to answer always. Right because there is no formula for what kind of a business, but the thing you should start based on if you have a problem statement which you are looking to solve, or you have certain product which uh, it's going to be, it, which is solving somebody's problem or uh, making their job easier in that particular case, okay? Or if you are helping someone to get the work done in lesser time or uh, get the one in lower cost, Okay, that is uh, the work which we will be starting and that will answer you what kind of business actually you want to start with. Okay, now business will not run without customers, correct? So unless or until there are customers or clients, so we'll say, okay, and they are ready to buy your services, there is no point in starting 
a business. So if you already have uh, contacts and pools and you know when you are starting, they are going to give you business and there is some commitment which is there, okay, then you should uh, start a business. Uh, and those are your ideal customers in that particular case. And if it is a product base, then uh, definitely you need to have a market survey done. You should understand what people want and whether they will really buy your product, whether they are ready to be your customer or not. Okay, so you have to actually identify who is your ideal customer in that case. Uh, the next question is like, what products and services will my business provide? Okay, because this this cannot be day one. Okay, you once you start the business immediately on day one, you cannot start selling all the services and products. It has to go in certain stages, and you should have your you should have five year plan, ten year plan, three year plan, whatever you say, or at least in your mind, okay, one first I'll do this, second I'll do that, then after that I'll launch this product, then once it is start selling, after that I'll launch this product. Okay, and set some timeline. Timeline may be may not be very stringent one, but at least some uh, band. Like you cannot say like, okay, in three years I will do such kind of business. Five years I will do such kind of business. Okay, that is not possible because practically there are a lot of issues keeps on coming and going. Right. So you should set a target. Okay, within three to five years, or five to six years, or six to ten years, like that. Right. And then based on that, you can decide what products and services your business are going to provide. And you have to be very crystal clear about that because if you don't have a vision of what you're going to sell and what uh, is your growth plan in terms of products and services, then in that particular case, the company or the organization will be always short-lived. And if that product and service uh, gets some big competitor or uh, get a low cost competitor, then you are uh, whatever the uh, uh, things which you are doing. And if you are relying on a smaller section of your uh, customers or smaller section of your business, then you'll die eventually. Okay. Another one is like, uh, am I prepared to spend the time and money needed to get my business started? This is a very important. People think many, uh, even many undergraduates, graduates, or even the people who are doing jobs, they always think, okay, let me start something and keep on doing my job and rest of the things. And when the business will start picking up, then I will leave my job or I will uh, leave my work, which I'm doing currently, and then come full time into the business. That doesn't work. Business needs a lot of time and uh, it doesn't need not always need a lot of money but it needs some money to start with definitely and then you have to key earn the money and survive so there is a rule of let's say uh what you what the people uh, generally call is a 60 months uh, rule okay uh, 60 months is like five years so if your company survives for five years then it will grow and it will survive for a lifetime Okay, but because by the time you already learned how to survive your company, one year, two years, three years, surviving is quite easy. Even though it is difficult, but it is not that difficult to do that. But surviving beyond two years, three years, and up to five years, if you're surviving till five years, then you have learned the art of making the company survive. And unless and until you reach to the survival stage, you cannot go to the profit stage. Okay, not all companies earn profit. You know, you already know, like a lot of companies are there. Zomato is there, then Sweek is there, Paytm is there. Okay, or many, many examples are there who never earn profit in their lifetime. Okay, so they are they are still not even break even. They are just the capital intensive companies and they are just doing a valuation type of business in that particular case. Those businesses run, but those businesses. Uh, also have a volatility in terms of like they can be down at any moment of time. Like for example, Zomato shares, Paytm shares, okay. They got listed at a good price, but eventually they dropped uh, around 90% uh, loss to the investors, correct? So businesses can collapse at any, such type of businesses can, can collapse at any time. So survival is important. You should be able to survive. You should be able to pay salaries to your employees. You should be able to pay your rents, okay? All your 
house expenses everything should be manageable and when the business reaches to that stage then growing the business and earning the profit is quite easy okay the next one is like what differentiates my business idea and the product and or services which i will provide from others in the market because if you don't have a differentiation you have a competition correct and believe me like there are many uh, like not everybody is born with a business family or not everybody is born with a silver spoon correct so some sometimes you take a risk and go into the business uh, with your whatever money you or uh, you had okay and enter into this area where you don't know anything about the business because your family don't run a business like i did okay no one in my family had a business and i actually uh, jumped into the business with whatever earnings i had and i lost everything in my first year first and two years second years okay but that's fine i later on it was survived and then i gained everything and everything is stable for now but that is how your focus should be you have to keep on doing those kind of uh, arrangements so but you should have a differentiation in the business idea okay if you don't have a niche product or niche services or the differentiation differentiation can be anything it can be a cost you provide the same services in lower cost okay it can be a niche skill the which the problems which other people are not able to solve you are solving those problems okay or it can be certain things which are much advanced like for example in certain domain let's say ai is there and all other things are there correct so in each and every places there is something niche and new things are coming so if you learn those very fast and become expert in that then that becomes your business uh, uh, input okay. next is like where will be my business located uh, location is important in terms of getting the resources you should get right resources at right point and also getting the supplies then uh, the raw materials if you have a service company let's say software company or something like that then you need you cannot actually open your office in very far from where other companies are there because then people will not join they are living mostly in a, like a scz area or the it cluster okay so people who are doing job there they live nearby and your office should be nearby otherwise they won't travel for very long distances people nowadays it is more because nowadays people are looking for more comfort than salaries that is how things are happening next point is like how many employees you need because you should not start with okay i have finance i need one finance guy i need one admin guy one hr guy okay one two engineers and two software engineer two hardware engineer or two mechanical engineers or three people in workshop so unless and until the idea is matured enough and you start selling you should not grow your business or if you have a hard order in hand purchase order in a hand some work is in hand then you can grow your team but having a lean team and a good team is always better i have also learned it in a uh, uh what you call a strong way basically like having a good team around is always good and that is even if you have to pay a little bit higher or whatever it takes okay but uh, rather than having 10 people having two good people is bit much better than having 10 people who are not useful to us okay so that is one good thing uh, we should take care of then what type of suppliers you need okay for example if you have a mechanical product then your supply should be near to the mechanical companies if you have a software product your office and uh, this thing should be near to the software companies where others are situated okay so that makes different uh, things like say for example if you are manufacturing some mechanical things and you need some fixtures and you need some frames to be manufactured by third party but if the distance from for the transportation is like let's say 200 kilometers 300 kilometers then whatever profit you are earning everything will go in the transportation breakages 
and all those kind of stuff okay so you should know what type of suppliers you need and whether you are near to those suppliers or not another complicated thing is like how much money do i need to get started right this is difficult question uh, always to answer you should all put a lot of maths do a lot of excel sheets put your projections put your expenditures for next one year what is going to happen limit your expenditure into that uh, so each and everything including electricity bill water tea okay all those small things matter a lot in the in this particular case and everything has to be counted there are consumables there are certain incidental charges people have to travel the petrol will come okay then you had to do some transportation transport will come you have to go for a marketing meetings that cost will come the stay will come so all those are overheads those overheads cost you a lot and the all those calculations has to be clearly done and it is not like okay i need 30 lakh rupees but i have only 10 lakh rupees let us wait till 30 lakh rupees have happened and then i'll start that will never happen because by the time you arrange those 30 lakh rupees the cost of getting the work done in 30 lakh rupees will become 40 lakh rupees because you might have spent one year one and a half year to collect those that money and all that stuff so instead of that whatever you have plan with that okay start low start slow and then as the momentum and things keep up uh, you have to keep on going ahead now not every time you will have your own money so you will need a loan right and first of all is like you have to first the first priority is whatever money you have instead of taking a loan can you survive on that if you cannot but if you know and if you have orders in hand go for a loan right there are there are companies who can give you a good loan for the startup there are many schemes in the startups government schemes are there in the startups where if you don't have anything also based on your idea concept uh, the incubation centers are there okay based on your idea concept you can apply you get a grant you get a loan the grants up to 10 lakhs 15 lakhs 20 lakhs are easily given which you don't have to pay back anyways okay and there are loans after the your product is successful government also gives you loan at 4% 2% 4% uh, 6% kind of interest uh, okay so all those schemes now government are having uh, it was not there before, but now there is a lot of uh, state government, central government, everybody is having those schemes and we, we should take care, we should actually get the benefit of those schemes. Okay. Um, next important point is how soon will it take before my product and services are available? Because the more you delay it, the more expenses will grow and more expenses will grow, more financial issues will start coming up then your resources will start uh, uh, having certain issues because the product is not getting launch it is taking time and they will have their own uh, thoughts in mind like whether it will g g happen or not happen okay so you should actually try to launch it as soon as possible then uh, the math should be then done, uh, done properly like uh, so on the day one you will not never earn a profit so that's what like there are three stages the first stage is like you have to ideate and make your product ready that is what we call as expense stage expense stage is like where you are spending you are not doing anything in that then the second stage is sustain stage sustain stage like where you have to sustain whatever you are earning whatever you are spending should match at least okay you should not borrow money from uh anyone else other than banks okay so you should not borrow for you should not have a poor condition or a situation where you have to borrow money from someone so that is a sustained stage and then the growth stage where you start earning profits correct so you have to actually do all the calculations and uh, do planning okay planning so i'll say planning is good because it gives you a target Okay, but don't get offended when the plan does not meet because that will that will happen. That is something or else which we never know, uh, which with the problems which we never know will keep on coming. Like COVID came in between, right? 
okay uh, now the china if somebody is working with china then china import as a issue right now the dollar price has increased so all those problems will keep on coming that is not like problems will not come and it will keep on postponing your plans okay but that is no problem unless and until you have your focus and you have maths done properly and you have buffers sufficient buffers in that other is like who is your competition that you should understand and you should keep watch on them uh, saying that what they are doing okay competitions are there for copying so if you have something good which you are launching you are small and when you are small then the big guys are there to copy what you are doing and they will copy okay you cannot say they they cannot copy or something like that uh, there is nothing which will stop you from copying uh, anything even though you have a patent okay so in even in case of patent certain ideas or certain structures or certain things can be protected but not everything can be protected there can be a improved version on which they can file a patent and they can launch a product on that correct okay? so you have to be fast uh, uh, affordable uh, lower cost than that there is an advantage of having a startup uh, or becoming a startup because you have very less overheads the bigger companies have very high number of overheads so for example uh, to manage a bigger company they have a bigger uh, team which is just for management okay not for uh, actual working in the plant and doing the production and doing the selling okay so they have higher expenses in the infrastructure they have higher expenses in management they have higher expenses in advertisement and like that which the startups don't have so they can actually keep their product price very low and that can be advantages uh, against the competition which we can take okay. now that is the, the another point next point comes with that only like how do you price your product compared to the competition so definitely uh, you also cannot price it very low if somebody is selling the piece for 100 rupees you cannot sell it at 10 rupees because then people mindset is like it is chinese or it is like very low quality or if it or it is useless or it doesn't work okay so even though if it is costing you 5 rupees the if it in the market it is sell sold at 100 rupees sell it at 80 rupees okay so that gives you a price band where you how should you price your product into the market right sometimes what happens because you are startup and your overheads are less your product price is less but later on when you grow your overheads will become high and then you cannot increase your price and you keep you end up in doing losses okay so all those things need to be considered when you are setting up the price for the product okay um next one is like how will i set up the legal structure for the business now you know private limited company or llp and all those things they are under a legal structure from the government okay and there are a lot of legalities which uh, entrepreneurs like uh, uh, me today also i don't understand many of the cases and there are people to do that there are ca cs all those things there are many returns which you have to file okay uh, there are a lot of things which you have to take care of when you are filing the things so many legal things are there which need to be taken care of when the uh, business is being set up okay another next one is the, uh, the same related to that is like as taxes you have to pay your taxes and next is like insurance okay so all those financial things are very much important initially it will be mess up for first year two years you will the cas will either tell you properly or most of the times they don't tell but once you go for a filing then you will understand okay this transaction should not have done from this account or there is a bill required there is a cash purchase there is a limit for a cash purchase you cannot purchase everything in a cash okay you cannot withdraw a certain amount okay this certain taxes if you want to get exempted there are there are filings need to be done some taxes need to be paid monthly some need to be paid quarterly some need to be paid annually some returns need to be filed on day to day or different different basis okay so all those things becomes as a legal taxation and uh, structure uh, now 
the next important point comes is like a managing a business managing a business in the sense you cannot do everything alone right you need helping hands always and don't try to do everything alone which i did initially and uh, it was very hectic it takes a toll on your health also and uh, uh, your uh, look, health then your timing your sleep your family your peacefulness everything uh, gets uh, a toll when you start up uh, when you start your uh, startup basically okay so don't try to do everything on your own uh, delegate to the different people and let them do that okay uh, then uh, advertising is uh, another important thing there are different ways of advertising there is there are uh, you can actually go on internet and see there are hundreds of ways of doing advertising including social media then networking and a lot of other things are there okay and based on your product you have to find your right point or right way where uh, how you you can advertise your business some businesses cannot be advertised on facebook and uh, twitter and instagram okay if you have a high profile business which is into the engineering service you cannot advertise it there certain businesses cannot be advertised on linkedin and uh, uh, like let's say a networking business networking right if you are selling certain products which are consumer products so you have to reach to the consumer then you need all these other channels of digital marketing youtube facebook and everything so that is how you have to actually see uh, how how should i advertise my businesses okay now these are last four right first is like what risk and sacrifice that's uh, such an enterprise means whatever you are making it will demand and can you accept those risks and sacrifices okay and nothing comes with uh, uh, negatives right job has their its own uh, advantages and uh, business has its own advantages similarly job has its own disadvantages business has its own disadvantages business is 24 by 7 and 3365 days kind of uh, in, uh, engagement even though you are going with a family you are sitting quietly you are sitting in a on a holiday saturday or sunday in at your home in your mind always business keeps on running okay so you cannot run away from that because it's your baby and you have to grow that and make it successful whatever it takes whatever time it takes and whatever effort it takes correct so a lot of sacrifices comes with that you there are certain risks also like if it fails if it doesn't sell then whatever money and time you have invested will go uh, waste okay and you should be ready for that there are risks always unless and until you take risk okay no, none of the business will become uh, successful but you should take a calculated risk in a way saying that okay when you take that particular risk it should not be like you have to sell your full house or something like that okay so the risk has to be taken calculatively in that particular case then the next is like will you survive for two three years until you get a sufficient profit so this is what first thing is like when you start your business on the first day itself you are not going to earn money correct it is possible in some cases but it is not it may not be continuous running on first month second month you will get some orders okay three third month fourth month fifth month you will not get any orders six month you will get some orders two three months again you will not get some orders so you should learn how to and you should have some backups okay it can be your parents it can be your relatives it can be your brother it can be your friends okay you should have some backups in that particular case uh, how we how are you going to survive now certain things are your passion like for example you have certain product to be launched okay but that product is going to take a lot of cost and you don't have money that now but then you have to survive that then you do services so there are certain allied things which you can do okay which which will make you survive for certain times so for three years five years something like that until you are launching your dream product or final product into the market so you also should understand and uh, plan for a survival okay so that is a that is the biggest planning which you have to do in worst case survival always has to be planned in this case 
then what backups you have to pay monthly salaries for your employees, your family, when your business is not working. That is that is the again same continuation of the point previous point. Okay, so there are other backups also available like companies give CC OD limits. Okay, which you can use. Let's say you don't get you are going to get a payment this month. Uh, sorry, no, after two months, but you have to pay salary today for this month. Okay, but then you can use the CCOD facilities which uh, uh, banks give. Okay, and then for two months you can use that money. And once you get that money, then that CCOD limit gets uh, again topped up. And you just pay interest for those two months. So those kind of things are there. Okay, then you have your other family, you have your savings. So don't spend your saving fully. Keep your saving as a backup uh, always. Okay, when this type of condition comes, so that saving should be used as a backup. If you are taking an investment from someone, okay, like for example, you have an investor who is investing there, right? Or if you have a family which, which is investing, so plan those money also very peaceful uh, properly. Out of that, let us say around 50%, you should never consume. You should keep that as a backup for your bad days. Bad days will be always there. It is not like every day will be a good day. So those backups should be kept. And the final point is, are you ready to fail? If you're not ready to fail, don't enter. If you have a fear of failing, don't enter in this field. Okay, this field is like where you have to be ready to fail. And failure is not bad. Failure is good, always good, because that will teach you a lot of things. And next time when you start that particular your entrepreneurship journey you already have the previous learnings and then you will never fail okay so that is how uh, basically if you should be ready and keep on fighting until uh, unless and until you succeed that's a fun it is a initially it is a headache but when you start learning all the and get used to it uh, doing business and entrepreneurship journey is very much fun there are tensions, there are happy moments, there are bad moments, there are sad moments. Everything is there in the life which you can enjoy with your entrepreneurship journey. Right, so this is this ends the basic things. So I just tried to summarize certain points which uh, the early entrepreneurs uh, should actually think and consider before starting or immediately after starting their journey. Okay, and if you take care of most of these points, I think your journey will not be, uh, I'll say it will be uh, easier. I'll not say it, is be, it will be very easy, a kind of stuff. Okay, it will be comparatively easier than the other things. But it is always a fruits because all the, it's like a gym, correct? You have to do a lot of exercise. There is a pain, your muscle pains and you, have to slog for a year to sweat and then only you get a good physics physics body and that stays and even after that you have to keep on maintaining it so business is the same okay so you have to slog a lot you have to work hard okay and once it comes to certain shape you have to maintain it right so thank you thank you for uh, taking the time and listening to me Thank you, sir. Yeah. Participants, any questions? You can put your queries in the chat box. Okay, let me start with the query, sir. Uh, yeah. Like you mentioned, uh, we must uh, at least survive for three to five years. Two, so three after, years, yes. Uh, yes. yes. Uh, so after how much period, like we can say that we'll be staying in the business or we'll be out of the business, like how much uh, percent of profit we can say that we are surviving or we are failing like that. See, successful companies never earn profits. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. Because even if you earn profits, that has to be reinvested. Okay. So the profit doesn't stay with us. So if the company is growing, then it is successful. I will not say it when it is profitable, it is successful. Okay. okay. So when the company grows, when you have 10 people, then you have 15 people, you are selling, mm -hmm. let's say, 100 units, you are selling 1,000 units, you are selling 5,000 units. 
Hmm. Okay. The more the the more you are growing, unless and until you are growing, you are successful. The moment your growth stops or it go, goes in a reverse way, okay, then and when you, you know, okay, whatever you buffer you had is going to get finished, okay, uh, in next two three months, then you should stop basically. Okay. Okay. There so one, stop in uh, the sense you should not exit. You should change your strategy and think about something else. Yes, yes. There are some queries from our students. Yeah. Uh, are there some sources to get work in initial phase? Uh, okay. It depends on the what type of business you're doing. If it is a service business, okay, basically like software and electronics and design and all those things. Right. So there are many websites where uh, you can actually take a freelancer work and start working. Okay. There are there are websites like freelancer.com or many others are there. Okay. Where you can find some work and start working on that. Right. Or uh, there is no shortcut to marketing and network. Right. So unless until you do marketing and network, you will never get anything. You have to go to 100 places and one place will give you some small work initially. But if you don't go to 100 places, you go to 50 places, you will not get any work. That, will defi that is definite. Yes. One more query from the same person. Uh, so what online marketing techniques initially we should use more? Uh, okay. Again, it is like if your product is ready, you should go for a marketing. Otherwise, there is no need of marketing basically. But if you have a services, there is uh, only a network which can be useful. Okay, so you have to meet a lot of people in in that particular area. Okay, keep on asking them for a certain type of work. Give them give them some confidence of what you are doing, and do some free job. Let's say free job in the sense uh, what we call a pilot work. Okay, which can be one day work or something like that to gain their confidence. So that they give, they will give you the uh, actual work at the next work. For the product, once your product is ready, then best way is to tie up with the agency. Don't do it yourself because we are not expert into the marketing. Okay, that is for sure, right? So nobody is expert into the marketing. Marketing companies have been doing it from years, and they are expert in that. They have resources, they have contacts, they have database, right? And they will get it done for you. And there are many marketing companies like that. If you Google it, you will find like hundreds of marketing companies. You have to talk to them. Uh, once you talk to them, just uh, the thing is like the payment should be based on results. It should not be just like that. Okay, okay, I'll do this work a monthly, this, that. No, if the, this result comes, this is the payment. If that result comes, that is the payment like that. Okay. Also, on what basis a company comes in a unicorn category? There is nothing like unicorn nowadays. Everybody, there are many unicorns. Okay. Yeah. okay. So there is not, as such, if you cannot, now you cannot say unicorns. You can call Zomato unicorn, but you can call Baiju unicorn. Okay. You can also call, uh, let's say, other companies. Like, for example, the biggest companies like Reliance and Daddy. They have more loans than their assets, correct? Then you cannot call them uh, unicorns as such. Okay. Or Zomatos and Swiggy, okay? They you, you cannot call them unicorns as such. Now, if you check their founders, right? Yes. Uh, unicorn is a company or a person who raised the company single-handedly, right? And that company valuation has gone very high, okay? The definition keeps on changing. But now if you see most of the founders, their share in the company is less than 10%, right? Yes. So whatever, yes. like if you might have seen that, uh, what was that program, Shark Tank, correct? Yes. Who came in Shark Tank, nobody has more than 10% share there in their own company. Right? So this yes. is what it becomes. And then Unicorn is just a, I'll say it's a myth. And you, you can either call, uh, most of the unicorns are called by themselves not by somebody else yes also like uh, you said uh, you have to watch out for the competitors right. now is there any strategy like how do i know that uh, what the other person is developing like are there any sites or uh, some information system where i can get this 
Like no, these. you will not get it anywhere. You can only get it through the network or there are many companies who keep on publishing what they are coming up uh, in uh, next future. There are, there are many exhibitions where they showcase certain products which are going to come in next one year or two years down the line. Okay. People would like to showcase the, it into exhibitions. So exhibitions is a good way where you can understand what people are doing. And other thing is like keep watch on their uh, product portfolio which they are launching, the people, type of people they are hiring. Okay. So that will be easy to understand. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, just a minute. Huh? One more question. Hello, guys. Uh, for the eye opening session, sir. Uh, actually, many things. Can, can all of you hear me? Can you hear me, sir? Yeah. Hello? yeah. Okay. Uh, so, my question is now, is the EV technology evolved, validated? Because uh, most of the customers are looking to buy at least one two wheeler right and now what is happening is as you mentioned earlier the cost of bicycle is around 30000 whereas the cost of scooter is around 90000 right yeah so first thing is why there is a huge gap and why there is a huge cost attached to it that most of us would like to know about it and another question is how about converting the non e vehicles into e vehicles okay fine so answering your first question uh, the cost of ev is not high so if you now take normal activa vehicle also that is costing 1 lakh rupees correct like petrol vehicles correct so nowadays the evs are coming at par of let's say it is costly like around 10 15% more than the petrol diesel vehicles that is because of the volumes which they are selling correct it is nothing to do with the technology or battery cost or something it is just because the volumes are less so cost is more okay. the technology for certain oems is mature like for example ether then uh, bajaj tvs whatever they launched the products those are revolt those are matured products there is no fear in buying those there are certain companies who do not have r d or do not have their own designs and uh, uh, they don't believe also in do a lot of things into the r&d part of that so those be though for them it is difficult path okay and there are many companies who are bringing from the china and assembly kit here say telling it made in india so okay so other than certain two or three oems in two wheelers rest of all are in the same category right so Technology is maturing, but maturing for limited people who are who are investing into R and D of the products basically. Okay. Now, second question is about the kit. See, it is feasible. It is not like it is not feasible to have the uh, existing vehicle not converted. I will say it as an add-on. Okay, because conversion is again a big headache because there is a regulatory framework and a legal framework. Okay, with that, the conversion is not cheaper. It is costly rather than uh, so conversion cost is coming in some so let's say if you're ninety thousand new vehicle, right? The equivalent conversion cost is sixty five thousand rupees. Now people will always think like, boss, another fifteen twenty thousand rupees, I'll buy new vehicle. Why should I convert my vehicle? Correct. So there is a conversion market, but it is very less and very difficult because you have to get it certified again from ARI which cost you around 25-30 lakh rupees for the uh, uh, company basically and then you have to re-register into RTO that cost another money there is a tax uh, for EV there is no tax as such but now some sometimes when the tax will go it will again start coming up okay but all those things will be always there and it will not be so cheap to do the conversion there is a possibility of add-on like your existing petrol is still there and you just have the electric also add-on done on top of it okay those kits are available in the market but very low quality and they don't provide a warranty and guarantee as such and uh, they have their own limitations because your vehicle weight is always very high 
already uh, petrol vehicle weight is high because they are metal bodies and everything most of the two wheelers good two wheelers are metal bodies like activa vego okay jupiter and other things so they have metal bodies right and their weights are quite high and uh, having both together it is uh, uh, what i'll say a penalty on a battery basically and to keep the cost down you cannot give a bigger battery and if you have a lesser battery you have thermal issues okay so it's a it's a circle and it's a technology limitation okay that is why then there is a category which is required which all together new vehicle category in between like luna or something which we used to have now xl100 for example today there is a category of xl100 correct which way which you can buy it at 70000 60000 something like that so in the same similar category the other vehicle can come and then it can be an option in between thank you sir for this if somebody answer. want to buy two wheeler they go for a branded ones who has a good track record from last four to five years in the market like ola tvs and ether and revolt like that yes sir and uh, another major issue is related with the charging time and i think you have uh, put most of your energy and resources into cutting down this time can you please uh, highlight on those issues sir charging time reduction see charging time is a function of battery basically the cells which you are using right uh, if we if we use a certain type of cells like if i am using lto cells i can charge my battery also like two wheeler battery in 3 minutes 5 minutes maximum 100% charge, nothing will happen to the life cycle. It will give me 7,000, 8,000 cycles quite easily. 10 years, I can go without any failure in the batteries. But that comes with a cost. Okay, so when the people should, uh, we are still not ready to pay that cost for the time, charging time. That is why it is a limitation. Otherwise, there is no limitations for, uh, like in the technology perspective, there is no limitation on charging time as such. So more the charging time, more lesser the battery cost, more the charging time. That is how it comes. Okay. Uh, there was another uh, concern over burning of uh, the batteries or the two wheelers uh, having a fire or the cars having a fire in between. Right. See, certain car car is only one Nexon got fired, but that was a different reason. It it had an accident, there was a damage and all that stuff. But otherwise, it was a it is a good design as such. But in two wheelers, it is definitely an issue of design and components. There is no quality. You know, it is like most of the parts are Chinese. There is no quality check. Uh, there is no quality. I'll say audit done on that. Right, there is no control on that particular parts. Okay, even certain types there is a design defects like Ola. There they have a design issues. Okay, and there is over commitment on the range speed uh, than the original design. So that's a marketing issue. It was supposed to be running the maximum speed of the vehicle was 85. Somehow marketing took a call and told it 125. So they have to give 125. When you have to give 125 kmph speed on a battery which can go up to 85 kmph speed, you will always have thermal issues, right? So there are many reasons, but mostly most of the reasons are either over specking or technical or quality. But as such, if you design a battery pack properly, it, there is no chance it can catch a fire. Okay. As like a petrol uh, vehicle, sir, do we have any regular ma maintenance for these e-vehicles? Mm, not as such. Maintenance in the sense, normal maintenance related to wheels and uh, suspension and all the things are there. But not for other parts of that. There is always a software check which needs to be done, but that's the only, that's the online diagnostics. Okay. Because okay. like when you go to service center, they check your battery health, any issues, if there is, a, if there is any cell imbalancing happening and all that kind of stuff. But most of those errors are available online also. You, you need not go to the service center. Okay. Thank you, sir. Any yeah. participant still has any questions? Any staff member has to say anything?
okay the budding okay. entrepreneurs sir who want to enter into the ev section right you are guidelines for them sir ah uh, no whatever i told all, all those guidelines okay. they only okay. so okay. those are the points which they have to consider when they are looking for or when they want to start something okay and try to answer most of the questions and listen until you answer those questions so okay uh, it is like kind of like we have learnt it by uh, what you call uh, burning our hands and uh, the the new guys should not uh, burn their hands initially if they know the history correct so if they take care of these points then there are lesser chance of burning hands and moving faster okay uh, thank you very much sir today we were enlightened by your rich experiences right from uh, we came to know about that your company is successfully growing obviously there are efforts there is contribution from the team and uh, we would like to congratulate you and all team members for successfully having 18 patents growing successfully and uh, as you mentioned one should understand what what business they actually want to enter what should what is their motive what is the idea what kind of business they can do right. how in a lesser time they can do with how less cost they can do mm. whether it's a product based business does it required marketing services the domains which you are touched actually now this is an eye opening and uh, well said sir that these are the guidelines for any budding entrepreneur to before entering into any business they have got a checklist today hmm with all these points that earlier they need to be very cautious they need to start low go slow and see that they can survive for 2 to 3 years and after the survival span is over then they can start thinking of earning profits and as you rightly said that all the successful companies are not earning profits because whatever they are earning they have to reinvest for for the growth of the company and for building their products building their company building their team you also rightly mentioned sir about the new startups should think about the niche areas what are the differentiators what advanced uh, advanced technology they can work on and also they should have the tools to learn fast they should have a good team they should have a good location for their company the money may not be uh, money is required at the beginning but may not be high and whatever money is required they can get gather it from various resources also they you had uh, rightly mentioned till we gather the resources till we get the required amount of money the expenses again rise so instead of uh, having any delays we should first take the make uh, have a correct calculations with us take the calculated risk and without any delay start with the projects that uh, with all the cautions and uh, with all the calculations right you also mentioned about the early stage the sustainable stage and the growth stage of the businesses you also mentioned about the challenges for the startups or the advantages for the startups that they are having the less overheads and the product price may also be less but along with the lesser product price you also mentioned about the caution with the same less price of the product when they are growing then it becomes difficult to manage with the less cost of the product then not only the technical knowledge is good enough but we also need to have a legal and financial sound knowledge of these uh, legal aspects as well as the financial aspects even the marketing aspects and if we engineers if we are good at the technical uh, from the technical perspective we should always have an association with the legal firms or the financial uh, organizations or the marketing uh, uh, firms you also mentioned about the uh, managing business is not an easy task but if we can delegate delegate the work if you assign the work to the right person or the right companies then it becomes easy to manage the business and grow successfully 
you also mentioned about the importance of advertisement and advertising on the right platforms is equally important then are we ready to take the risk are we re and the risk should be calculated risk are we ready for the sacrifices are we ready to fail if you are ready to fail at an early stage good if you are going to learn from the mistakes and then plan redesign and re-strategize our business strategies then definitely the success would be there and again you had also given us some uh, platforms where a freelancer can go and check if they can start early with the services or with the products having such an elaborative and very uh, experiential uh, inputs i firmly believe that all our budding uh, entrepreneurs or the aspiring entrepreneurs now definitely with this eye opening sessions they have got the check marks with them the milestones with them and we will always be associated Any with you one. we look forward and definitely as you are helping all other colleges or the students we would like to have your presence here we would like to have the uh, excellent center over here for the eb or with your guidelines you tell us how we are supposed to go ahead and we'll follow that sir with this i would like to thank you as well as all the participants who have taken out their valuable time basically sir you from your busy schedule because in our early discussions we came to know that you are totally uh, engaged for at least near uh, for the next two weeks but uh, respecting our invitation we are really thankful to you to finding out some time and having this session sir i hand over this session now to prajwal ma'am it told sir uh, would you like to would you like to say something it told sir or any of the team members any of the team members would you like to contribute anything okay so uh, with your pan uh, with your permission would you like to say something or uh, with your permission uh, shall we end the session hello chair uh, sorry hello yes sir yeah yeah i think that was nice talking to all of you so yeah we can end the session yeah thank you sir thank you okay thank you very much thanks a, thanks lot. a lot sir we'll get back yeah. to you sir yeah sure. thank you very much bye good day sir bye